There's a natural tendency that many people have when they're considering quitting smoking to try to find somebody to quit with them. And they think that this will be helpful, you know, if they're having a hard time, they can contact the other person. There's a real limitation of setting up this kind of system with another person quitting smoking. It's a buddy system. And a lot of people will think that a buddy system is something that's, you know, really common. Like, they, they think that programs like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous would use a buddy system. But, you know, they don't really use buddy systems in programs like that. They use a sponsor system. And there is a huge difference between a buddy system where you're relying on another person who's in the exact same stage of a quit that you are, as opposed to dealing with someone who's a long-term uh, quitter, someone who's been off the product that you're dealing with for an extended time period. See, people who've been off for a long time, they've kind of got insights. They have a track record. You kind of have a pretty good chance that if you call them when you're having a tough time, time or a bad moment, you don't know what's happening or you want to know what to do, that they will have some, again, insight to where they were at one point and how they overcame that time period or how that time period just passed. Sometimes they didn't do anything to overcome it other than just living through it. But they have a track record. They, they can tell you how things did get better and where they're at now. You call someone who's in the exact same stage of a quit that you are, with the idea that somehow you're gonna build each other up, there's just as good of a chance that you're gonna tear each other down. That you're gonna hear, oh my gosh, they're having the same reaction, the same things, oh, things never get better, uh, look how hard it is to do this, and gee, is this worth it considering this effort? They don't have the insight to show you, to tell you that, yeah, it's bad right now, but hey, it's getting better. I know it's getting better because they don't know what's getting better. They don't know any more than you do. At least when you're dealing with someone who's off for a longer time period, again, they have insights to where things are going. People in the middle of a quit know what it's like to quit. You wanna know what it's like to be off over a long-term period. You wanna know what you're striving for. You already know where you're at. You wanna know where you're going. And someone who's in the middle of the same quit that you are doesn't have that information. They, they just have their own personal perspective of what's happening right now, which is no more valuable than what you have to offer them at that point in time. There's other limitations of a buddy system. Uh, a big one, a very big one is you may be having a rough moment. You're having a tough time and, and you want to get talked down from this time and you call this person who quit with you and you may find out that at this point in time, they just happen to have gone back to smoking. And all of a sudden, your reaction can be like, oh, they can smoke, you know, so, so can I. Well, yeah, you can. If someone goes back to smoking, you have the full potential and opportunity to, to go back to smoking. The bottom line, though, is you don't want to be a smoker. That's why you quit smoking to start with. They didn't want to be a smoker. They lost their quit. That shouldn't be your reason for losing your quit. So that's another issue with a buddy system. You don't know where they're going to be at at the time that you may need them the most. You don't even know that they're reachable at the time that you need them. Another issue, let's say you're both staying off. You may have a bad moment at some point and just start to think, well, but I'm, I'm doing it you know, with this person. I'm going to let them down and I, I, no, I'm not going to smoke. You know, this, this wouldn't be fair to the other person. As soon as you put it into that perspective, even though you're both successfully off right now, your reasoning for being off is somewhat skewed. You're staying off to help this other person. You can't stay off to help another person. Your quit has got to be contingent on your desires of what you want to be doing for you, not what you should be doing for another person. Because if you do this with another person's uh, benefit as the primary reason if this person, well, again, as I said before, if they go back to smoking, that's going to be it. You're, you know, you've lost that motivation. But even if they don't go back to smoking, you could start to feel like you're depriving yourself of your cigarettes to make this other person uh, happy or to make this other person's life better.
If this other person does something that ticks you off somewhere down the line, and again, this could be a spouse, it could be a friend, a coworker, or who, whoever it is. If they do something that makes you mad, and every now and then people who you really care about and who care about you do things that make you mad. But when you are a recent quitter and someone does something to make you mad, the thought process that can go through your head is, I quit smoking to make this person happy and this is what they did to me? Well, I'll show them. <laughs> I'll smoke a cigarette. And this can happen. It could be a retaliatory response for some nonsense, something that's uh, will have normally blown over, would not have been a big deal down the line. If it's a minor issue, hey, if it's a major issue, maybe it won't blow over. Maybe this is a real issue that existed, having nothing to do with whether either of you had quit smoking. But whatever it is, the idea of a retaliatory response of, so you're going to smoke a cigarette to show them, you're the one getting hurt. It's not them. Your quit cannot be contingent on another person. Your quit has got to be contingent for you because you don't want to do this on a basis of deprivation. Because if you start thinking that you're depriving yourself of a cigarette, you're going to you're, you're just not going to get better with this. You're just going to feel a constant sense of deprivation. I want to smoke and I can't do it. I want to smoke, but I can't do it. You've got to come to a point somewhere where you realize you don't want to smoke. There's times you want a cigarette, but you don't want to smoke, and that's different uh, terminology. Do you want a cigarette at times? Sure you do. It sounds like a real magical moment to top off an event or you know something to deal with a, a stressful situation or just whatever, some celebratory circumstance where you used to smoke and enjoy uh, someone's company with a cigarette. So there's going to be moments like that. But to take the cigarette under one of those moments, you have to accept the consequence that you're gonna to have to go back to all the other cigarettes that used to go with it, to go back to where you were when you were a smoker. When you were a smoker, you wanted to quit. Not only did you wanna quit, you did quit. You went through what may have been a real hard withdrawal process. Not everybody does, some people quit and it's really easy. But if you quit and you had a really rough time, that should remind you of how much you don't wanna be a smoker. What you put yourself through to get off of smoking and now understand that, sure, it sounds like a real good idea every now and then to have a cigarette, but not at the cost of going back to where you were and the consequences of smoking the way you used to smoke because those consequences are likely what weighed into the equation that you wanted to finally stop. And there's different reasons why people come to that conclusion. Sometimes it's the social aspects of smoking. It becomes so unsocial, antisocial. Uh, you feel so out of place, so embarrassed by being a smoker. For some people, it's the expense because it keeps going higher and higher and higher in costs, and you can't believe how you know what percent of your budget has to go to supporting you know your nicotine addiction. For some people, it is health because they're starting to actually uh, maybe for the first time realize that they're the dangers of smoking that they never grew before or worse they're encountering the problems they're developing conditions you know their doctors are basically not giving them warnings of what might happen if they don't quit but what has happened because they've been smoking all along uh, it could be the aesthetics of smoking you just realize that they smell terrible it could be from uh, pressure from people around you that they don't want you to smoke anymore there's just a whole package deal of being a smoker and if you analyze that whole package you'll realize you don't want them under those terms that's why you quit and that's going to be important that you quit because of all these personal reasons not because of somebody else's personal reasons that's why they quit you could quit at the same time as another person but you got to keep your quits independent you want them to quit for their sake fine you want to quit for your sake that's great too but not for each other's sake because again you don't know where they're going to be at so basically if you're quitting at the same time as somebody else that's okay but don't make that person the primary go-to person for for help when, when things are getting tough if, try to find someone in your real world, who you know used to smoke, who doesn't smoke anymore, who will likely want to be helpful if they realize what you, what you're doing. If you can't find anyone in your real world, there are plenty of support sites out there that you can go to on the internet. And uh, even if you don't go to a support site, you can just go to uh, look up information about quitting that can help support your desires. I, again, you can use my videos. I got stuff out there addressing anything that likely can come up. We have videos to likely address any situation that comes up. And there's, there's just so many avenues out there that you can use to help support your quit. Don't 
go to the one that, in a sense, is just loaded with, with pitfalls that can really undo you at the time where you don't want anything undercutting your ability. All you need to do to stay quit though, whether people quit around you or not, whether there's any smokers around you or not, or where everybody around you smokes or not, any of these contingencies, you can still sustain, you can, you can pull off a quit and you can sustain a quit. And it really is a matter of you making and sticking to your own personal commitment to never take another puff.